Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a different video than my normal beauty related videos and before I get started, please excuse my little bun here. I'm having a really bad hair day so I just put it up in a bun. But anyway, so this video is going to be um, my a military video actually and for to help out those who are in the military like joining the military. Let me just tell you the title of this video. <laughs> um, it is going to be my MEPS experience, female experience. Obviously, I'm not a guy, so I don't know like exactly like what they go through um, versus what females go through. But I'm just specifically going to be talking about my experience um, for the MEPS as uh, from a female point of view. And I'm wearing my shirt today that my that I got when I enlisted. But anyways, um, um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay. So I'm going to get started. Alright, so if you guys don't know what MEPS is, you guys can be going to MEPS or just the regular people who watch my videos. It's completely fine, obviously. You can watch whatever video you want. But um, I am specifically focusing on those who are um, going to MEPS or just want to know about MEPS. Um, and this is where you go through when you decide to go into the military. It's not just for Army. Um, it's for Army, Navy, Marines. Um, I'm missing a branch. Air Force, uh, of all those, all the branches, um, every person, National Guard, Reserves, Coast Guard, whatever, um, goes to there for your enlistment process. Um, so I met up with my recruiter. So the day before, I left on a Sunday to go to MEPS, and I left to go to a hotel. And my I, my recruiter picked. Actually, no, I met him at the recruiting office and. Um, around 3 4 o'clock and we left to go to the MEP station. Um, my specific MEP station is, I live in Georgia, um, is the Atlanta MEPS um, station and that is located in Forest Park and that's also where I will be shipping out of that MEPS also um, to my, to the airport. And so anyway, so I got to the hotel and uh, went through signed in and everything um, in the room that we signed in there were like video games you could play just to like kind of hang out um, if you wanted to leave you could sign out and everything but um, yeah uh, I just signed in and went straight up to my hotel room and um, my roommate happened to be there when I unlocked when I was unlocking the door I was like I wonder if she's gonna be in there and I thought I didn't hear anybody but then I kind of heard it and when I got in there um, she was so we were like I was so excited and she was so excited. Um, very sweet girl. Um, we got along very very well. We just kind of clicked really quick. She had a um, very very outgoing personality and she was just very very sweet. And it's so sad. I probably will never see her ever again. Even though she was Army National Guard, just like me, um, we might end up being at the same um, a basic training. I don't know. We might. But um, anyway, so. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I got to the hotel and I was like unpacking and stuff and we watched some TV and we literally just kind of talked about like the, the ASVAB. I was like so nervous to take the ASVAB and um, I took the ASVAB the next morning. Um, I got there. I literally like literally took the ASVAB at 530 in the morning. No joke. But um, so we, yeah, we just talked. Um, I had to straighten my hair that night, so it took me like two hours. So we talked and just watched some TV, and we were like doing our little daily, um, nightly um, push-ups and sit-ups and everything together. Um, took a shower there. The hotel is incredibly nice. Um, not incredibly nice, but it's overly decent. Like it's way past decent. It's um, very, very clean and um, not five-star extravagant, but really, really nice. Um, so yeah, so you get two tickets, and um, they're meal tickets, and you get a breakfast and a dinner. And the dinner was, what did I have? I had like this pasta stuff, and there was green beans and mashed potatoes. It was really good. Nothing incredibly fancy again, but it's really good. Uh, it was really good. Um, so we went downstairs, ate dinner, and you give them your ticket, obviously. And what else did we do? We... Yeah, we sat there for a while, and then there was like, right when we were going back upstairs, these guys were like, can I get your number? I'm just like, you're in high school, you're 18 and I'm 20, back off. But yeah, there'll be guys like that at MIPS, and they'll be trying to get your number and your Facebook, and guys, don't even waste your time on that. Um, 
But yeah, there's like a lot of people. There's shippers that go to MEPS. There's people who haven't even enlisted yet, like me. Um, there are people who are going back to MEPS for the second time. Um, which I, I ended up having to go back to MEPS for a second time before I um, was enlisted and swore and everything. And I will explain that later. But, um, so... Yeah, so we got back to our room and then we went back downstairs and we were just talking with other people. Um, just talking because, I mean, all we could really do is watch TV. No one was allowed in your room except you and your roommate. And all the guys and girls were on completely different floors. Um, what else? Um, so yeah, we went downstairs, talked, and then we had a meeting at like 9 o'clock that night about what was going to happen the next day and what was expected of you. and. Like, they gave us some pamphlet on, like, sexual harassment, like, if that happens to you, blah, 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 at MEPS, this is how to report it, and blah, 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 stuff like that. And then we went to bed. I ended up studying for the ASVAB that night, like, the dork I am, because I was just so worried about it. Um, so I studied for a little bit, and then we went to bed around 12.30, and we got up at 3 o'clock in the morning uh we had to be downstairs at 4 30 and my roommate and i like we just wanted to be like extra extra cautious to make sure that we're downstairs and we ended up like it really was not that serious but i mean you know god they tell you be downstairs 4 30 be downstairs 4 30. Uh, i took my shower the night before and everything so we just it went by really fast but we we got downstairs at 4 25 because military when they say like 4 30 that they mean like 425 so um we gave them our breakfast ticket and we ate breakfast breakfast is not really my thing honestly i was expecting like a continental breakfast that morning i don't know why but there was like eggs there was like a corned beef hash and some like potatoes and i just ate the potatoes there weren't even ketchup on there for me to dip my potatoes in but honestly i wasn't even that hungry and i really don't eat breakfast that much anyway so I would have been eating breakfast if it were like sausage and bacon and stuff, but don't expect like an extravagant thing. Um, but I mean, it was good. It was very decent, like I said. Um, so yeah, we ended up waiting around for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half um, for people, for them to call us and stuff. And we turned in our room key and like put our bags to the side of the um, hallway and everything. Um, and there are other people that aren't going through MEPS in the that hotel too. So. We were like asking, oh, are you here for MEPS? Or like, what are you talking about? So there are people there that aren't in MEPS, but this hotel is specifically specifically for people who are going to MEPS. And um, like where everyone goes to stay the night, like that's the hotel that they send people at. And just if you want to stay there. But um, so yes, yeah, so we ended up waiting for like an hour and a half. And this guy, we talked to the cook that actually cooked the food. He was incredibly cool and he's just giving us like the best advice and about our lives and stuff and after I enlist I'll probably never I mean after I ship out like the night I ship or the day I ship out I'll probably never see him again but um he was really cool and like really uh left like a thought like wow I should you know think about my life and we have so many opportunities and like a future and stuff and he was just saying don't waste it basically um so yeah after they called us we finally got um on the bus shippers and the um enlisters people who are going to enlist are on different buses it's, i'm pretty sure because we stood in like different lines but um we sh went onto the bus uh, it was like a school bus and we drove over to the MEP station and i think the MEPS opens up at 6 30 i'm pretty sure it's 6 30 it might be six um and we got there and we had to like split up into different lines there was the shippers line on the right and then the middle line is for people who were doing the ASVAB or is back for uh another time like if you were there for MEPS before and then the other side was what was the other side I think it was just for like no no, no the middle was for if you're taking the ASVAB and then and I can't remember exactly what but I know the ASVAB people were in the middle and then on the left were for people who were just going to MEPS. I'm pretty sure what that is. And going through the MEPS process. Very confusing. So after that, I went and sat down and uh, you wait for the person to call you up to get your sticker and you wear it on the right side of your chest. And 
after that I went and took up the ASVAB it took me about I'm thinking it took me like a two hours I think and got my score did fine and um I was really nervous <laughs> that I was going to fail or something but yeah I got my score and after that I sat back down some more be aware you're going to be waiting a lot at MEPS my first time at MEPS I didn't have to wait that much uh, but my second time, I waited forever, and all I went was to do was to just enlist. But anyway, you probably will be waiting a very, very long time. So after that, I went on to the uh, physical part of the MEPS. And um, not everyone is taking the ASVAP. Um, you could have taken it before or whatever. Um, you can, I think if you take it in high school, they use your high school scores after a certain time. I'm not completely sure because I didn't take the... Um, I didn't take the ASVAB in high school because military was not on my mind in high school. But, um, so after that, we, um, what did we do? Oh yeah, I, I went and got my blood pressure taken first, and then I sat back down <laughs> somewhere and waited. And then I went into the ear test, the ear, um, hearing test, and you basically go into this room, and there's like seats in this little box thing, and then you close the curtain, there's a curtain, like, I was in the seat like next to the door part so you close that curtain and there's curtains in between you and with the other person and honestly it's kind of hard to concentrate because you're hearing everyone else's clicks um, but I passed like you just literally have to be deaf not to pass the hearing test but um so I passed the hearing test and then I went to the eye test and I had to take out my contacts and basically as long as you can see with corrective lenses you're fine. If you're like legally blind, you're not going to get into the military. I'm just saying that. And if you can't hear, you can't get into the military. Yeah, I don't know where that cut off. But anyway, so when I sat at the machine the first time, like, I literally, the, 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 um, the, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought because of the video cut off. But the, um, the machine wasn't working and he's like did you ever get eye surgery did you ever have surgery on your eyes i'm like dude i've never had surgery on my eyes and he was like making it seem like it was me and just a uh, fair warning people at meps act like they have a stick up there you know what so don't expect them to be overly nice because they're not um but um the, uh, he was like have you ever had surgery and just like blaming me i'm like dude maybe it's your machine and then he finally realized the machine was broken so i went on to the second machine and everything was fine did my eye test whatever then i left sat down some more and then after that um we went i went to go get my blood drawn and guys your recruiter is going to tell you to drink tons of water the night before so that you can take the the um the drug test I literally was waiting all day to take the drug test. I thought I was going to take it early in the morning, like right when I got there, no. So I, all, all the girls, like we had to pee like so bad. But anyway, so we were waiting in line and to do our um, blood test and the blood test tastes test for HIV antibodies. Um, it's just HIV as far as I know. And I got my blood drawn. I was a little nervous, but like I literally got myself so into the zone that I wasn't even. I was like, Courtney, you're not gonna be nervous. And I sat down in that chair and got my blood drawn. And it was not bad. You felt like a little pinch, and it was it. And usually, like the nurses, as far as medical, like um, getting your blood drawn and like the urine tests and stuff like that, they're really nice because I know that you're that people are like nervous about that kind of stuff. But yeah, she was really nice. And then I went in in. Finally, after billions of hours, I got to sit, I mean, I got to go and take my drug test. And we had to sit a little bit longer. I'm like, guys, please let me go to the bathroom. So you go into this, the bathroom, and it's like this open kind of bathroom thing. And there's two stalls in there, and there are no doors on the stall. And the nurse sits, stands right in front of you, and there's another person in the stall, obviously. But there's like a divider between the person and the stalls. It's just there's no stall door and then guys you literally just go like she watches you and she's not like staring at you you know like this or whatever to make you feel uncomfortable but um yeah so you do that it's really not that bad yeah you're peeing in front of somebody but honestly they're just they're not being like weird and just like wanting to look at you and stuff like they're just making sure you don't tamper with you know all your stuff with the pee and stuff so you do that they test for pregnancy and for all the drugs like PCP, um, I don't, what is it, uh, do coke, uh, 
crack I'm sure is crack the same thing as cook I really don't know and marijuana stuff like that and all those kinds of drugs um, they test for and obviously I passed I don't do drugs and I wasn't pregnant so I took my pee to this other lady and she took that and then after I did all of that I went what did I do after that uh, oh yeah you go and you go into this other room and oh yeah when you go to the drug uh, spot guys are not allowed into that place guys are not allowed there and girls are not allowed into the guys side of MEPS um, as far as the um, physical and stuff goes so after you get your, when you get your blood drawn after that like you don't see guys for a long time so after that you go into this room and you undress in, uh, in your bra and underwear and then you go and put like a hospital gown thing on and then you sit and wait in line to be called to get your girl physical basically and you go into the room I found you go into the room and she just checks you um, a little bit down there but really not like she just kind of looked down there and she was like all right you good and there's another nurse that comes in so that you kind of feel more comfortable she just asked you a lot of questions like what is she, do you have like constipation or ever done drugs or drink or stuff like that um, have you ever been pregnant? Stuff like that. And obviously no. And um, you go and you sit, lie down on like the little bed thing and then she, you like have to put your legs up in this, like at the gynecologist. And then she just kind of checks you and um, the thing I did not know she was going to do was do a breast exam. And I have um, cysts and I didn't get that documented so that is why I had to come back to MEPS. Um, luckily I got to finish the whole process and all I had to do was come back and enlist but I was like are you kidding me right now like I mean I have documentation but I just didn't even think about that so I had to go after that you know I got dressed whatever and then um, she I think she asked oh yeah you do the um, scoliosis test also um, and you do all of that like but naked just saying so um, but you're not in front of any other girls it's just you and the doctor and the nurse so um after that you go out and then um me and this other girl ha happened to be like the last two people of the whole day to do that which is crazy because i was i mean i guess since i took we took the asvab so yeah we were one of the last girls to go and you do like the the, the um movement test so you like do squats and you run across the room like walk fast across the room and have to like pivot really fast and then the famous duck walk there's a plenty of videos of the duck walk and it's really not that bad um the only one that i had problems with was like you have to stand on your knees and then like get up onto your feet all in one movement and not bubble but i mean i did it eventually um and you get as many tries as, as you can as you want i think um after i mean obviously after a while i'll be like mm, think think you might want to come back another day i think they would literally expel you or send you home if you couldn't do one of those um but yeah you do that and you like go up on i say roll day because i i dance but you go up on your feet like all the way off your feet i don't know how to explain it but you just you have to do all these like movements to make sure like your joints work and you know you you can move and stuff like that um so yeah after that i got dressed oh yeah you do that like half naked by the way you're literally i was literally like half naked for probably an hour and it was cold and but whatever you do what you gotta do you don't have to do it again um i don't think actually you might have to do it when you re-enlist but anyway so um yeah i did that and after that like my day was i sat down got my papers and i couldn't enlist i mean i couldn't enlist that day or swear in that day which is really bummed me out but um i mean it happens uh because i needed to go get my doctors uh clear to clear the cysts and stuff so yeah so Fast forward to about two more weeks and um, I went through, you know, I stayed at home that night, that time because I wanted, to, I think I had something to do with my family and then my recruiter just picked me up that morning at 4.30 and then we went to the MEP station and you line up in those lines. Oh yeah, by the way, when you go to the door at MEPS, you have to um, uh, take all of your stuff out of your pockets and bags and stuff and put it through a conveyor belt thing x-ray and you go through a metal detector obviously you can't have like weapons or knives guns use your brain guys um you will immediately get disqualified for having things like that 
and then you just put your phone and st like your bags and stuff in this room and you can have your phone at a certain spot of time at the MIPS and they do serve lunch um it's all right you know it's not anything special but um yeah you can only use your phone at a certain area at MIPS but anyway so the second time I went to MIPS was on a Monday and um at the first time I was at MEPS, if I didn't say this, I went on a Sunday and then we woke up and went to MEPS on a Monday. So I went to MEPS the second time on a Monday and um, got there and I went, sat down a lot. Guys, I sat down so much. I sat down so much. Um, you're waiting for hours and all I needed to do was enlist. But, um, you know, I, you sign in, whatever, get your little tag thing um it just sh tells people like what you're doing there at MEPS and I went waited into the this area where all of the um branches are like the branch offices are and then I finally went into the National Guard office and long story short we just um you have to like sign all these things and put your fingerprint there and blah 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 and um I chose my MOS and my MOS is 88 m and um when i got there like all the medical jobs that i really wanted to do were taken and i'm pretty i'm perfectly fine with 88m and 88m is like transportation and you know i think it's cool so um i did that and i had to go put all my fingerprints in and then like go to this lady and she was just like who do you want your money to go to like if you die and stuff um, so I did all of that, got every single one of my fingerprints in, and, and then I waited some more with my parents, because my parents were there that day, um, to watch me swear in and stuff, and then after that, I went back and sat down in the office, and I put my fingerprints, like, I signed some stuff with my fingerprints, and then everything was good, and then I waited, like, another hour and a half to swear in, because I missed the first swear in, um, like, a swear in slot that they had. But anyway, so, yeah, I just waited a lot that day, honestly. And then, um, you go into this room, and they tell you, like, how to stand and, like, at ease attention and stuff. And guys, you ha you can't move, you can't look at each other. Okay, anyways, as I was saying, so when you go to square in, you can't really, like, joke around and, you know, kind of goof off. Can't even talk to each other. And, um, so, since I, like I said before, I was in a National Guard, I'm in a National Guard, so I swear in like differently I say a different kind of swear in statement um so like yeah it was just a little bit different than everyone else's and I said mine afterwards um and I was the only person in there in the National Guard um so when you do go to swear in your parents come in after everyone's like lined up in formation and everything and you don't like you don't see them or anything um like you can't turn around and stuff like that so um, yeah, so you swear in and then there's no pictures or anything during your swear in ceremony. Um, but afterwards you can take your pictures and stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, so we took pictures, um, my recruiter took pictures and after that I signed out and that was it. That was the end of my enlistment process. Um, yeah, sucked that I had to go like twice. It really did. But um, it was awesome. It was worth it. I was, I'm very proud of myself. And um, I will have more videos up, um, military videos up very soon. And also, if you guys have any questions, please, please um, put them down below and I will um, get back with you as soon as possible. And um, yeah, don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, I mean, I'm no expert or anything, but I will definitely um, answer to the best of my abilities. So yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.